we could do without. Because y'all just coming outside, yeah, man, but coughing on shit. But that dude's already done a lot of extra shit. So. Yeah, like that. Like, I, don't, I don't. I mean, the Philippines is a whole different animal. But like when I look here in America, like the fact that people were still going to the like I don't understand. First of all, I think it, was, it feels like kind of a setup when they say, "Okay, social distance," but you can still go to the beach. You can still go out and run. Well, that defeats the purpose of staying at home. Well, and, now you can. Now you can't even do that. Yeah, because people yeah, you can't get a you can't go to a trail, you can't go to the beach. Which you shouldn't. That that should have anything. been the first place they locked down. Santa Monica, Santa Monica's losing their mind, bro. It's bad out there. Like I mean, assume me. I mean, I don't think I don't agree with that. I mean, I'm I work out there. I'm telling you, like people are freaking if out. People, if people, if people would have been more responsible, like this would have terms of like, like, like. You know, going to these like outside places, like not in big ass groups and like not sitting right next to each other. Yeah, but, why the fuck is everybody you know, at Runyon Canyon? Right? Where, some people are acting like it's spring break still and fucked it up for everyone else. So now we got all this shit closed. Like the parking lots aren't even open. Like you can't even park at the beach and look at the fucking beach and sit in your car. Like, Somebody got a thousand dollar ticket. Uh, Daily Breeze, I read it. Some dude, got, a surfer, got a thousand dollar ticket. They are not playing, and they really yeah, are giving out four hundred dollars tickets if you stay out past curfew. At least four hundred, from yeah. what I've seen and heard. All right, man, but there's a lot of other shit we gotta talk about. So oh yeah, that, we'll save that know, for the end of the show. Uh, on, the, on that note, you know the NFL draft in reaction to all this is considering you know different formats. They're kind of considering either you know doing a full kind of remote experience be a Zoom call where all the teams are just have all their guys kind of spread out or, you know, just allowing team employees to go to the facilities, but, you know, with enough space in between them and kind of convene that way. But but I don't even know if that's what you're talking about because I think somebody mapped it out and was like, even if you have the GM, the coach, you know, the, the head of scouting, and, you know, a, your cap guy, that's already four people. And you're not talking about position coaches. You're not talking about regional scouts. You're not talking about runners. You're not talking – and, and you're, you have to have enough people to make calls, to take calls, to inform the players. So so this is a, like, you know, usually the, the teams are anywhere from like 15 to like 30 people, I think I read, something like that. So – they don't even want people convening in rooms of more than 10 people. So I don't even know how that's going to happen. And Realistically. The Saints, initially, the Saints were talking about doing that at a brewery, but I think the NFL kind of shut that down because they're like, well, it's either everybody's going to be able to meet or nobody is type of situation. They don't want to give anybody a competitive advantage by – you know, letting one team convene and not all the other 31. Yeah, because they were going to be at a brewery that the Bensons owns. But my thing is, okay, when it comes down to picking a player, it's the GM, the owner, the coach, and the cap guy. Like, yeah. the scouts, like the scouts are already give, have already done the work. You already have enough yeah, tape. It comes down to who you want. But it's a, it's a, it's a situation of, like, you know, when the clock is on, a dude is falling, and it's like, we got to get this dude. And then somebody else goes, nah, like, he's falling for a reason. We don't want him. It's like, no, look at the tape. Check out this game. Here he is playing this guy who went in this first round, and he's dominating. Him. Like, so it, it just kind of takes away that organic live element of, like, hey, put the film on this guy right now as this is happening and let's make this shit happen. Because Jared so, Allen said he wasn't going to watch because it's the most boring thing ever. Yeah, for sure. But but and, and to, to your point, it's like, yeah, the scouts have already done a bulk of the work. So you're really going to see who has the best scouts right now because it's really going to be all based off that scouting and based off of what everybody's doing as an individual versus, you know, what you can collectively do on draft day and, and all the kind of rank and, and 
stuff that kind of comes with that whole situation. But and, and players yeah, are already really sending out pro day what, tapes. What the scouts say. Yeah, players are already sending out pro day tapes too. So it's kind of like people are doing what they got to do. Um, I just think when it comes down to it, I mean, it's nope. not like the draft is a hit. Like it's not like every draft pick is a hit, anyway. So it's like, but this year, because the virus, it's a crapshoot. But this year, especially, it's going to be a crapshoot, and we'll see. Maybe I think honestly yeah, they should see. go to the. They should consider doing around a day. Like stretching it out around. I mean, the day. I think it would be cool. They That'd be brilliant. I think it would be cool just to give us something to do and watch. It was a whole day but, to just talk about that. But I think, but I think, like I said last week, you know, I think they just want to make it. I think the NFL is just trying to be the one consistent thing that we have right now across life, and they're trying to maintain as much or as close to their schedule as they possibly can, at least on the good side of it. That's the good way of looking at it. On the bad way to look at it is NFL just doesn't give a fuck about anything and they just zag on everybody big and they're just out of touch and look ridiculous. But yeah, because baseball was thinking two, about start two sides of every coin. Yeah, baseball two was thinking about open, every coin. Yeah, baseball was thinking about opening up on July fourth, which I think would be fantastic for baseball. But assume, assuming everything's straight, by then. Yeah, assuming it's everything's straight, straight, but it's like. I feel bad. I I feel the worst for high school kids, man. Because what if you're like playing a spring yeah. sport and you on the verge of getting a scholarship? Now it's never gonna happen. Yeah, like, we're gonna I look mean, back I on like a three. Gonna four- a, it's gonna, well, even my little sister who was a junior, I was talking to her about like the whole college application because she like you know they're not even letting anyone take the SAT, so. Like, how's that situation going to work out? Because usually yeah. applications are due, you know, in, like, November or something like that. Do they even still count so, the SAT anymore? How is that timeline, how is that timeline going to be? Do they even still count the SAT anymore? Because I've heard in a lot of places, like, they just don't. Schools don't even consider the SAT anymore. Yeah, I think they do. I don't like, know. like, they don't completely rule it out, but like, even in high school, I remember, it's like, just, Senior year, they're like, yeah, we're not really factoring the SAT. We're moving away from the SAT is, like, the main reason, the main component for you getting into a school. We're looking at other things. And then I look at, uh, I think it's Fullerton. It's Fullerton. No, I think it's the point is, uh, the point is, just like everything as we know it, is going to be at the very least on a different timeline, if not completely changed. Yeah. That's, that's all that I'm really trying to say about that. Which is kind of the scary part like there's so much limbo it's like well let's say you're doing and prepping for this but then once things open back up all that prep work is just useless because like this doesn't apply anymore which is kind of crazy and and, and that and that's the thing right because they're like saying and one side of it is is they're saying like well like all these major conferences and events like Maybe we just don't need to have them anymore. Like maybe people aren't going to convene in in three and four hundred people groups anymore. Like ever again. Like you know, if if it's just as effective to meet in a Zoom and it doesn't cost you know corporate dollars to fly and to stay in the four four star hotel, then why even do it? Like maybe people are just going to let have Zoom conferences now all the time. And movie and, theaters. And, yeah, and and like yeah, like yeah, that's true. But at the same time, it's also like, okay, are people going to stop going to bars? Like, are people going to stop drinking? Like, are people never going to go to sports games again? Are we really so, like, as much as we, as much as as much as we can talk about how disruptive it's going to be, we we'll also have to face the fact with like humans are creatures of cult, of of habit, and they're stubborn, and I don't know like how much. It really is going to change anything, you know. You know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Like, I could see it changing everything, but I could also see it change not changing a goddamn thing. Which would be horrifying, I think. Like that's I don't know what would be horrifying the actual change or if everything goes back to normal and we're just like, so we just gonna pretend that didn't happen. Oh yeah, remember that two weeks we we stopped the world? Like remember not, that two months we stopped the world? Three months? If you think about okay. it, like because in April they run out of scholarship <laughs> money for. Kids and I got homies going who are, who are JUCO football players and I'm just like, what are you gonna do? You can't op- you can't open up your enrollment right now. Like, 
you're, I mean, you're recruiting right now. It's April. They run out of scholarship. Like, and even, um, I think it's uh, Irvine, there was a story that came out where, like, they're kicking kids out of student housing. They're terminating all their contracts. But some kids have nowhere to go. They can't go home. Yeah. So they're stuck there. Yeah. And then they're moving them in the one room dorms. And I'm like, now would be the time for college to be like, all right, now we got to really take care of our downtrodden, financially destitute students who have nowhere to live. They should be able to live in their dorms. There should be accentuating circumstances for something like this. And we're just seeing that a lot of people are not prepared. These corporations are. They're not prepared. Well, the issue is the issue is dorm living is essentially communal living. So, do we even have dorms? Like, do dorms even look the way they do now? Like, they've isolated you know people. Like, are you gonna are you gonna have one shower for eight people anymore after all this? Like, yeah, that's, the, that's only the freshman dorms, but like there are other dorms. But usually, dorms are set up like that. That's the traditional yeah. dorm format. That's, that's usually how how it is. Unless you're like in a, like CSUN was different. It was like the freshman dorms, but, but it, which they still but even pack that, out. Even that is like, okay, are you even going to have four people? Like even four people, uh, one shower, the rest. Two people point. to a room, yeah. So, but yeah, man, with that, uh, uh, other things going on with the NFL calendar, um, OTAs are delayed indefinitely. Facilities are closed, which they might open up for the draft, but we don't know, but... The NFL schedule is expected to get released in May, early May to mid-May. Um, they're planning to not delay it. I don't see why they would. You know, it's essentially just a few people in a room kind of hashing out where things go. But, you know, the other issue with the schedule or, or update the schedule is they officially extended the playoffs. They added that extra wild card game. It, it's approved. It's Owners approved it after the CBA kind of moved it in motion, and so it's all it's a, everything's a formality now. Unless, of course, Eric Reed's lawsuit goes through, which he wants the whole CBA. I guess there's some language in there that got changed or mixed up without them knowing. They voted so and then they changed the to, language, and then everybody realized, oh yeah, shit, so, Eric Reed's right. So he's right. So he's appealing it and and trying to bring it to another vote and. I think the vote came down to like 50 people, so who knows if it'll even stand. But but as of now, the the one playoff game is expected to stay. So what do you think of that whole situation, KB? So the at a playoff game, are you excited? I, honestly, my issue isn't even the playoffs. My issue is you can't have any international games now. You can't send teams over. Yeah to England and play games now. You can't do that. You can't have any international flights going out. You can't risk that. So it's like Jacksonville, they practically want to play in London all the time. Like, how do you even have, because that was one of the things I noticed. I was like, like, you can't, and there's obviously going to be nobody at these games if they're still the social, because some states are take like Georgia was one of the states who are finally starting to realize, oh, maybe we should quarantine. Um, and a lot of states are Miami, just, Florida. Yeah. And like a lot of states shutting down school for the rest of the calendar year, not just the academic year. So if you look at it like, like where are we going to see these games? Like, so I don't see how you can have, it's one thing to have the games. Like, NBA wants to talk about having all yeah. their games in Vegas to close out the season. Okay, that's hard enough in its own right. How the hell are you going to send They were talking about team... cruise ships. A cruise ship? Yeah, they were talking about getting all the players and their family on a cruise ship. Bro, and, there are and, people... Uh, there are, the rest there, of the season on that. There are ships docked in Oakland with people dying on them because, like, they have the virus. And Not, the dead anymore. Virus. Not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, yeah. that was happening. So like you got to look at okay how can it how can things backfire on a cruise ship or one of those military liners or college basketball where they play on a ship like honestly well they're hoping they're football's hoping different though based off of they're hoping based off what they know that the 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 
death rate is a lot lower with, you know, men 